so let's do this, right? And faith happens. And after that takes place, that faith moves us into action. And ultimately, then God will honor our faith and help us to bear fruit for him. I want to say this too, that the faith to fruit process is a collaboration. It's between God and us. Amen? It's this cooperative partnership that almost seems at times like a symbiotic relationship. What is a symbiotic relationship? It's the word bios that's in the midst of that word symbiotic means life. And the S-Y-M there speaks of there being this relationship. So you put it together and you're saying that a symbiotic relationship is where both parties in this relationship are drawing life from the other. Does that make sense? They both are dependent on the other for the life of the whole. And, and even though God is, is all sufficient in and of himself and he doesn't need us, he's purposely restrained himself in the sense that he has committed things to us to do that he will not do without us. And I don't know why that is, but it is the truth. And I can prove it from scripture. Doesn't Jesus command all of us as Christians to spread the gospel? Isn't it there, right? But, and, 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 and don't you think that you are called and I am called to preach the gospel to the people that are in our neighborhood? Yeah. We are, but has everyone been, been preached to by you? Has everyone been shared, have you shared the love of Jesus with everybody in your apartment complex or everybody in your neighborhood? I haven't. What does that tell me? That God just hasn't necessarily moved upon me to do that? Or does it mean that there is a symbiotic relationship here and God is waiting on me to do something? He's waiting on all of us, right? It's true. It's true, yes, that God doesn't need me in the sense that if I don't do what he's called me to do, yes, he can go to plan B. But plan B, if it's going to work, is going to be with someone who obeys him, right? The only reason that he would have to go from plan A to plan B is because plan A just didn't obey. But if plan B disobeys, then he's got to go to plan C. He's going until he finally finds someone who will just obey right? So there is this kind of relationship with God. Why God would entrust to us the most important thing ever, that is the salvation of men's souls, the eternal salvation of men's souls. I'll never know. But I know it. It's true, according to scripture, right? So we have to, we have to get that understanding that, yes, God is the one who does all the miracles, but we are the, we're the messenger boys and girls, we're the ones that are the vehicles that he uses to be able to get his will done in this earth. Right? It's the truth. It really is the truth. Let's go to the next uh, deal. Let me show you this guy. Oh, wow. Charlton, old Chuck Heston here playing Moses. This iconic picture of this powerful man of God. The people, the, the Jewish people who, who look throughout the, the book uh, of their, their Bible, our Old Testament, they see Abraham and they hold him up in high regard and they, they hold up all the patriarchs in high regard, but there's something about Moses. Even when Jesus was dealing with the Pharisees, he would say, what did Moses tell you, right? He didn't say, what did Abraham tell you? There's this strong sense of Moses being the man, the guy, the one who talked to God face to face as a friend. Uh, in, in a different way than seemingly anyone else did. The one that was raised up as a type of Christ who delivered his people with great miracles working in his life. So we see him at that point, and we see the amazing amount of fruit that God produced in his life, but we need to go back to the beginning to kind of see the process that maybe even God wants to take us through. And so the, the way I want to do that real briefly is by seeing what the New Testament says in one book in particular about Moses and about his faith to fruit process. So we're going to go into Hebrews chapter 11 that talks about lots of people and how their faith caused them to produce fruit. We'll just talk about Moses for a second here. So why don't you read this with me? Chapter 11, verse 23. Let's read it together. Ready? Here we go. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw he was no ordinary child and they were not afraid of the king's edict. Um, most of you know the story. There was a, a, a pharaoh that arose that uh, was very insecure. He thought that the Israelites were going to somehow conquer them. They lived in harmony with one another for a time, but 
he decided to enslave them. And one of the ways he decided to really, really uh, solidify his, his iron-fisted hold on them as slaves was by taking the male children and killing them, the little babies. And this was a terrible, terrible thing that took place. And there was a lot of sorrow and a lot of amazing fear and intimidation that happened as it would in any uh, situation that, that would be like this. But something happened with Moses' parents that we don't necessarily read in the scripture, but the New Testament is interpreting and showing some light that something happened that God must have spoken to Moses' mom and dad because faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. They must have heard something that caused them not to be afraid of what the king or the pharaoh was saying and instead getting some sort of word, as cra crazy as it seemed, to take their little baby and, and to entrust him right down there in the Nile River. God must have said something to them to have them do that. It reminds me of the fact, uh, well, look at Ephesians 2.10. It says, for we are God's handiwork, his poema, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Notice that Moses, um, his parents saw there was something special about him says he was no ordinary child. And this is one of the reasons why they believe that God had this special plan for him. I want to say to you that God sees you the same way. There's a special calling for you and for me. And this scripture in Ephesians 2.10 says that. It says we, talking about all Christians, are God's handiwork. The word is poema. It's where we get our word poem. It also is a word that's used for a beautiful tapestry that, that is woven by hand. And God's saying, you're that. From the very beginning, from the moment that you're saved, you're his handiwork for a purpose. And the purpose is unto good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So there are things that God has prepared for you to do and for me to do already. Before we even know about it, God has something prepared for us to do. There's fruit for us to bear even before we're aware of it. That almost rhymed. I like that. Fruit before you're, or, you know, bear before you're aware, right? God has fruit for you to bear before you even know about it. Amen? And he has that, that plan even now, right now, whether you understand it or not, whether I understand it or not. Let's go to the next part in the book of Hebrews. This is verse 24. It says, By faith Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. So even at this point in Moses' life, already God was speaking to him. I hear of people who, are not, who, who, who say that God was speaking to them even before they were Christians. They could just sense that, that God had called them to do something, but they, they ran from God. Have you ever heard that testimony before? God was already dealing with them. Before things were optimal, before everything lined up the way it was supposed to, God was still dealing with them and talking to them. And I think that God's talking to all of us, right? He is. He's speaking. He's been whispering something to your heart about what it is he's called you to do. And it's just a matter of kind of listening to that whisper. Sometimes it seems so subtle. But God was whispering to Moses. He was talking to him. He talked to his parents and he spoke to Moses. Even though he grew up in this interesting environment, still he began to have 